Hallelujah. How's everybody nice? Are you blessed and highly flavored? Are you anointed and appointed? Are you lit? Hallelujah. God is good all the time, isn't he? Lots of things going on in the world. Get ready, get ready, get ready. Are you ready? Ready for a holy shift? Praise God. James chapter 4. Thank you, Master. Mm. James 4. Starting at verse 1. Thank you, Master. Where do wars and fights come from among you? Do they not come from your desires for pleasure? That war in your members. You lust and do not have. You murder and covet and cannot abstain. Obtain. You fight in war, yet you do not have because you don't ask. And when you ask, you don't receive because you ask amiss that you may spend it on your pleasures. Adulteresses and, ad adulterers and adulteresses, do you not know that friendship with the world is enmity with God? Whoever therefore wants to be a friend of the world makes himself an enemy of God. These are things how you... Are you living according to the ways of the world? Are you making decisions? Now, maybe everything's not according to the way of the world. Amen. But are there things that God is not pleased with, the decisions according to the ways of the world? Whoever therefore wants to be a friend of the world makes himself an enemy of God. Or do you think that the Scripture says in vain, the Spirit who dwells in us yearns jealously, but He gives more grace... Or more plan of, you know, of escape. Therefore, he says, God resists the proud. But he gives grace to the humble. Therefore, humble, therefore submit to God and do what? Resist the devil. And he will flee from you. Draw near to God and he will draw near to you. Cleanse your hands, you sinners, and purify your hearts, you double-minded. Lament and mourn and weep. Let your laughter be turned into mourning and your joy into gloom. Humble yourselves in the sight of the Lord, and he will what? Lift you up. Wars, these are wars of desires. Wars of desires. There is a spirit that the Lord has been, and, and, and it's a common spirit, but it's, an, it's a seductive spirit. It's, it's a deceiving spirit. And it's called a spirit of gluttony. And people don't realize how intense this spirit is. So many times people think that gluttony is just something of overeating. That's how the world portrays gluttony. Does everybody understand it? But that's not what gluttony really is. Gluttony is associated with something that you go beyond the boundaries and limitations that God has placed in your life. People step beyond those things. You know, he, he warns us, don't overwork to be wealthy. That's called gluttony. So there's other things associated with gluttony. Gluttony has many brothers and sisters, like greed, covetousness. All of those are associated with gluttony. But so, again, the world looks at gluttony as just an area of overeating. First of all, the spirit of gluttony attacks individuals that are more soulish and more fleshly because they don't have self-control over the enemy, over the old man. And that's where the, that spirit of gluttony looks at. He tries, they try to provoke, and that spirit of gluttony, once it starts to begin to influence, you know, look at, people emotionally eat sometimes. That's gluttony. Does everybody understand why there's not control? Why they go beyond boundaries? They're trying to bring a false fulfillment in their life instead of God's presence. 
Though, so there are people that are called workaholic. Listen, addiction is gluttony. It's big time gluttony. You know, we're, but we've never been told that addiction is gluttony, but it is. It's full blown gluttony. Amen? Is everybody okay? So to, it's to go beyond the boundaries in the area of what God has said, even to go beyond the boundaries of desire. It's always looking to fulfill the soul or the flesh. And Deuteronomy 21. If a person continues in that realm of gluttony, they will become homeless. Now again, what is homeless? It's individuals without the presence of God. Amen? There is a spirit of gluttony, and the world controls individuals by gluttony because lust of the eye, lust of the flesh, and pride of life, all promoters of gluttony. I mean, think, remember what lust is. It's an overwhelming desire. Well, lust is the overwhelming desire, but what brings you to that place of going beyond the boundaries is gluttony. Hallelujah. And, and again, many people have been living a life of gluttony and not even knowing it. But people are looking carnally. That person's a toothpick. How can they live a life of gluttony? It's got nothing to do with about food. Does everybody get it? <laughs> Deuteronomy 21, 18. Not that it can't have something to do with food. Amen? Because a person can overindulge themselves all the time. People who look for Food is a fulfillment instead of God's presence will be considered gluttony. Look, when the Holy Spirit says, lay it down, and you don't, you've gone over the boundaries. Now you've gone into gluttony, and you will open the door to other demonic spirits. Hallelujah. Verse 18, let's speak it together. If a man has a stubborn and rebellious son who will not obey the voice of his father or the voice, voice of his mother, and who, when they have chastened him, will not heed them. Then his father and his mother shall take hold of him and bring him out to the elders of his city, to the gate of his city. And they shall say to the elders of the, his city, This son of ours is stubborn and rebellious, and he will not obey our voice. He is a glutton and a drunkard. Does everybody see that? Now, they're associating with gluttony as drunkenness, addiction. Then all the men of his city shall stone him to death with stones. So you shall put away the evil from among you, and all Israel shall hear in fear. Boy, we wouldn't be here. <laughs> Hallelujah. Thank God for Jesus. <laughs> Again, stubborn, rebellious, it's addictive gluttony. Amen? Galatians 5. Hallelujah. Verse 16. I say, then walk in the spirit, and you will not fulfill the lust of the flesh. For the flesh lusts against the spirit, and the spirit against the flesh. And these are contrary to one another, so that you don't do the things that you desire or you wish. But if you are led by the spirit, not under the law. Now the works of the flesh are evident, which are what? Adultery, fornication, uncleanness, lewdness, idolatry, sorcery, hatred, contentions, jealousies, outbursts of wrath, selfish ambitions, dissensions, heresies, envy, murders, drunkenness, rev revelries, and the like of which I tell you beforehand, just as I also told you in time past, that those who practice, 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 
such things will not inherit the kingdom of God. In other words, practices to go beyond those boundaries of salvation now. See, gluttony can lead people into the out of the right out of the boundaries of salvation where they're now living out living out of salvation's truth that's called lost. It can lead them right out. Amen. So they practice beyond the boundaries of salvation by putting these things into practice, which is gluttony. Gluttony is also greed, covetousness. Look about, um, I mean, they used to have on TV about, uh, what do you call those, hoarders? Hey, man, you know, they, they show these people who are hoarding everything, man. That's gluttony. Full-blown gluttony. It's the same thing as addiction, isn't it? Look at people that hoard things. They can't let go of anything. They're, they, whatever it is, it's gluttony. Hallelujah. 1 Corinthians 6. And you got to ask yourself, because, you know, we're, the, the Word says, judge yourself and examine yourself. When's the last time you came against the spirit of gluttony? Well, that's why God's exposing it. Because he's sneaky. He hides behind covetousness, greed. Hello? He, he hides, behind, hides behind all of these things. First Corinthians 6. Is that right? Hallelujah. Verse 12. Glory to God. Uh, hmm. Let's start at verse 9. Do you not know that... Is everybody there? Okay. Do you not know that the unrighteous will not inherit the kingdom of God. Do not be deceived. Neither fornicators, nor idolaters, nor adulterers, nor so homosexuals, or sodomites. Think about that. they going beyond what God's limitations of as sexual for a husband and wife has now gone beyond it. And now it's become spiritual gluttony. And it's sin. Nor sodomites, nor thieves, nor covetousness, nor drunkards, nor revelries, nor extortioners will inherit the kingdom of God. And such were some of you, but you were washed, but you were sanctified, but you were justified in the name of the Lord Jesus and by the Spirit of our God. All things are lawful for me, but not all things are what? Helpful. All things are lawful for me, but I will not be brought under the power of any. Foods for the stomach and the stomach for foods, but God will destroy both it and them. Now the body is not for sexual immorality, but for the Lord and the Lord for the body. And God both raised up the Lord and will also raise us up by his power. Do you not know that your bodies are the members of Christ? Shall I then take the members of Christ and make them members of a harlot? Certainly not. Or do you not know that he who is joined to a hollow is one body with her? For the two, he says, become one flesh. But he who is joined to the Lord is one spirit with him. Flee sexual immor immorality. Every sin that man does is outside the body, but he who commits sexual immorality sins against his own body. Or do you not know that your body is a temple of the Holy Spirit who is in you, whom you have from God, and you are not your own? own for you were bought at a price therefore glorify God in your body and in your spirit which are God's wow what's the problem lack of presence again amen the lack of the presence of the Lord and because there's lack of presence there's lack of control control over the old man over self and Proverbs 23 In verse 1, Proverbs 23, verse 1. 
when you sit down to eat or partake with a ruler or someone more higher in authority or someone, consider carefully what is before you and put a knife to your throat. If you are a man given to appetite, in other words, a person that partakes or eats anything. Now, you got to understand that there's the parallel between the food, but he's going to now bring it to deceptive food, which is doctrines and things to that degree. If you're a man given to appetite, do not desire his delicacies, for they are what? Deceptive food. Do not overwork to be rich. Now, look at what he just went to from deceptive food of delicacies because these are things that we are influenced. He says, look at, don't overwork to be rich. Why? Because the love of money is root of all evil. That's called gluttony. Because of your own understanding cease, will you set your eyes on that which is not? For riches certainly make themselves wings. They fly away like an eagle toward heaven. Do not eat the bread of a miser, nor desire his delicacies. For as he thinks in his heart, so he is. Eat and drink, he says you, but his heart is not with you. The morsel you have eaten, you will vomit up and waste your pleasant words. Do not speak in the hearing of a fool, for he will despise the wisdom of your words. In other words, a person of no control, no self-control, no control over me. They are, they, many of them eat as a busybody in other people's matters. In the ways of carnality, it is deceptive food and gluttony. It is what? Deceptive food and gluttony. Luke 12. Some people are addicted to flesh book. That's gluttony. They can't keep their opinions to themselves. They got to express it everywhere. Shut up and get into your closet. <laughs> oh, hallelujah. Luke twelve thirteen. And one from the crowd said to Jesus, Teacher, tell my brother to divide the inheritance with me. And he said to a man, Who made me a judge or an arbitrator over you? And he said to them, Take heed and beware of covetousness. Is covetousness gluttony? Yes. For one's life does not consist in the abundance of the things he's of his what? Possessions. Then he spoke a parable to them, saying, The ground of a certain rich man yielded plentifully. And he thought within himself, saying, What shall I do since I have no room to store my crops? So he said, I will do this. I will pull down my barns and build greater and there I will store all my crops and my goods. And I will say to my soul, Soul, you have many goods laid up for many years. Take your ease, eat, drink, and be merry. But God said to him, Fool, this night your soul be required of you. Then the, whose will those things be which you have provided? So he who lays up treasure for himself and is not rich toward God. And he said to his disciples, Therefore I say to you, do not worry about your life or what you will eat, nor about the body what you will put on. Life is more than food, and the body is more than clothing. <clears throat> Covetousness and greed is gluttony. These are takers, not givers. Amen? They're hoarders. This guy was a hoarder. He was doing phenomenal, great business. Instead of distributing and helping those in need, he decided to build up more places to store it, thinking he's going to need it down the road. You know, so many times, and this is how worldly thinks, and when people are, are carnal, they think about their future. I need to save this. I need to do this. Let me tell you something. 
When you turn it all over to God, he makes a way where there seems to be no way. He is the owner of every storehouse and warehouse. And it's abundant life. As you become more of a giver, you'll find out that he fills more. He cannot, you will never have something empty if you are a giver. It constantly fills and fills and fills just like the oil and the flour. Now don't be a glutton putting those two together, you know what I mean? Does everybody understand that? You know, people, what is this? The Bible says, how would you rob God? And people rob God from their tithes and offerings. How many people rob God from their tithe of their stimulus? Now, you know what? They got a curse on them. And they don't even realize it. So now delays are going. And it's just a matter of time where they begin to diminish, diminish, diminish. Something is going to happen. Because you can't outrun a curse. You run into it. Amen? Well, God didn't see it. What an idiot. Like God's blind? <laughs> Why, well, I, I didn't tell nobody. <laughs> no relationship. No reverence. <laughs> Hallelujah. Ephesians 4. Ephesians 4, 17. This I say, therefore, and testify in the Lord that you should no longer walk as the rest of the Gentiles walk. Hello. Do they walk in gluttony, covetousness, greediness? Yes. And the fertility of their minds, having their understanding dark and being alienated from the life of God. Gluttony is not a life of God. Because of the ignorance that is in them, because of the blindness of their heart, who being past feeling have given themselves over to lewdness, to work all uncleanness with greediness. But you have not so learned the ways of Christ. If indeed you have heard him and have been taught by him, as the truth is in Jesus, that you put off concerning your former conduct, the old man which grows corrupt according to the deceitful lusts, and be renewed in the spirit of your mind, and that you put on the new man which is created according to God, and true righteousness and holiness. People don't realize that gluttony is a form in the area to where they must have the last thing. In other words, it's the last cupcake. <laughs> but it's somebody else's. And they will steal that cupcake. Even though it's somebody else's. Does everybody understand that? That's greedy, that's covetousness, and that's gluttony. And that person is sowing in the flesh and going to reap. Because it is a react moment, not a response moment. Anything that's a sow to see it with a react moment is flesh. Somebody might be angry. Okay, I'm pissed up taking that cupcake. You ain't getting it. Hello. That's react. <laughs> You'd be wearing that cupcake soon. <laughs> or you might be even turning to a cupcake if you keep that up. Hallelujah. They'll be calling you cupcake. <laughs> Yo, cupcake, what happened to you? Hallelujah. <laughs> Glory. Again, here we see that the blindness and lewdness and 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 Greediness and deceitfulness, all a part of gluttony. All of this. What does he say? Therefore, putting away lying, let each of you speak truth to his neighbor, for we are members of one another. Be angry, don't sin. And don't let the sun go down on your wrath, nor give place to the what? Devil. Hallelujah. Colossians 2.
So, you know, when you really think about how the powers of darkness work, they want you to sow in the flesh. If they can get you to react, they know. They can get access. In verse 20, Colossians 2, hallelujah, verse 20. Speak it, therefore, if you die with Christ from the basic principles of the world, why, as though living in the world, do you subject yourselves to regulations? Do not touch, do not taste, do not handle, which all concerning things which perish will with the using, according to the commandments and the doctrines of men. These things indeed have an appearance of wisdom in self-imposed religion. But false humility and neglect of the body but are of no value against the what? Indulgence of the flesh. In other words, gluttony, covetousness, greed, all of those things. Is everybody okay? Indulgence of the flesh of carnality. These are lovers of the world. 1 Timothy 6. First Timothy chapter six, verse six. Let's speak it now. Godliness with contentment is great gain, for we brought nothing into this world, and it is certain we can carry nothing out. And having food and clothing, with these we shall be content. But those who desire to be rich fall into temptation and a snare. And into many foolish and harmful lusts, which drown men in destruction and perdition. For the love of money is the root of all kinds of evil, for which some have strayed from the faith in their greediness and pierced themselves through with many sorrows. But you, O man or woman of God, flee these things and pursue righteousness, godliness, faith, love, and patience, gentleness. Fight the good fight of faith. Lay hold on the eternal life to which you were also called and have confessed the good confession in the presence of many witnesses. The love of money is root of all evil, all indulgence, gluttony, greed, covetousness. Go to uh, 1 Timothy 4. Now the Spirit expressly says that in the latter time some will depart from the faith, giving heed to what? Deceiving spirits. Gluttony is a deceiving spirit. And doctrines of demons, speaking lies and hypocrisy, having their own conscience seared with a hot iron, forbidding to marry, and commanding to abstain from foods with, which God created to receive with thanksgiving by those who believe and know the truth. For every creature of God is good and nothing is to be refused if it is received with thanksgiving, for it is sanctified by the word of God and prayer. First Thessalonians 4. Oh, glory. Is everybody okay? Are you getting this? First Thessalonians chapter four. Verse three. Speak it for this is the will of God, your what? Sanctification. Listen me tell you that sanctification without the presence of God is not sanctification. Does everybody get it? In fact, that's false sanctification. People think that they're sanctified unto God by sustaining from certain things. Does everybody understand it? 
No, it's getting in God's presence and being separated from the ways of the world. That's sanctification. Hello. Is everybody all right? Praise God. For this is the will of God, your sanctification, that you should abstain from sexual immorality, that each of you should know how to possess his own vessel in sanctification and honor, not in passion of lust like the Gentiles who do not know God, that no one should take advantage of and defraud his brother in this matter, because the Lord is the avenger of all such, as we also forewarned you and testified. For God did not call us to uncleanness, but to what? Holiness. Therefore, he who rejects this does not reject man, but God, who has also given us his Holy Spirit. <laughs> well, what the heck? Sanctification and regeneration. Does everybody get it? Well, only by the presence of God. Remember, these individuals become homeless. Homeless from what? Homeless from God's presence. And they do not have control over the old man or over self. They don't have control over the soul. They don't have control over the flesh. Sanctification and regeneration process. That's, we're in regeneration right now, amen? Everything is being regenerated. Let me tell you, everything is being made new. You're finding things move away. Everything. We are stepping away from everything right now, all into brand new. It's like the world's going to be under a born-again experience. It's wild. And those who are connected will be follow, go right with it and follow Christ. And many who are out of position will miss, and hopefully they'll turn. And then many that have never been will be drawn in, but many will run. Because many people run from the presence of God, not to the presence of God. They want to stay in that covetousness, greedy way of life, gluttony way of life, which is the way of the world. Ne never putting the others, they're always putting themselves first, not anything else. Listen, if you're not living a life of kingdom business in mindset, then you're living a life of self. Everything should be about kingdom business. What can I do for the kingdom? Is my labor for the kingdom? What does it say? Labor unto the Lord. You, you in other words, again, if when we begin to fall into an area of planning your future, hello? So many people spend more time planning their future instead of living from it. There's a difference. When you live from your future, you trust in God, man. You trust Him all the way. You know, whatever's happened, okay, Lord, you said give this all away, give it all away. That means you got something better. People freak out over money. Some people freak out over food. Some people freak out over anything they can freak out over. The reactors and nuclear reactors. Hallelujah. They live that way. They just like to freak out. They're always thinking worse first. Lack of God's what? Presence. See, because in the presence of the Lord, you don't lack anything. You know he's going to work it out no matter if you have nothing. Don't, doesn't matter what happens. You know, we had a call the other day about a, a six-month-old child that the babysitter tripped with the child the child broke its leg, busted its head. And they had to bring the child to the emergency room. And they, they were calling people for prayer, and we got a call from them. Man, I was devastated. It tore me up. Because this child just went through heart problems when he was born. And, man, I just went to pray to the Lord. And I, and I was like, you know, Lord... I know there's something you can do. And he gave me a vision of him being in the operating room. And he looked at me and he said, I assure you I'll be with this child. That's all I needed to see and hear. 
And I just, thank you. Well, we got a call back that the surgery and everything because he was bleeding from the brain. He's fine. No seizures, no nothing. He's sleeping and eating. I mean, I'm talking 24 hours, man. I was just so grateful. Why? Because he answers prayer. And again, if when you're when you when you when your desire when your life is God's presence, and your life is His and not yours, everything changes. Nothing, nothing, nothing is impossible. Nothing. All, you know, you're going to go through stuff, yeah. Because you're getting pre prepared for something better. Everything is a preparation for something better. <laughs> Does everybody get that? But we don't want to fall into this area of living a life of the world. We want to come out of the world. And that's what God's trying to do. Because see, the life of the world depends on themselves. They depend on their own presence. They depend on their own abilities. Their own bank accounts. Again, if, if you never had a bank account, praise God, you got one in heaven. <laughs> and let me tell you, every one of us has storehouses in heaven with our name on it. Just waiting to be released. You need that currency, though. Faith. Hallelujah. Is everybody okay? Colossians 3. Spirit of gluttony. Verse 1. Let's speak it. If then you were raised with Christ, seek those things which are above. Where Christ is sitting, sitting at the right hand of God. Set your thoughts on the things above, not on the things of the earth. Now, it doesn't mean you become a granola. Amen? Nutty and fruity. <laughs> so there's so many people walk around, and they think they're so spiritual. They can't even start their car, you know? Uh, and it's just incredible. They, they've got no common sense. That is not spiritual. Those are familiar spirits. Again, we don't want to become granolas, nutty and fruity. We want to bear the fruit of Christ, not granolaism. Set your mind on the things above, above, not on the things of the earth. For you died and your life is hidden with Christ in God. That means you utilize the things from the eternal life of Christ to work into the world. Amen? When Christ, who is our life, appears, then you will also appear with him in glory. Therefore, put to death your members which are on the earth. Fornication, uncleanness, passion, evil desire, covetousness, which is idolatry. So is gluttony idolatry? Yeah. Because of these things, the wrath of God is coming upon the sons of disobedience. Are these things considered obedience? Disobedience? Yes. Are they considered sin? Yes. In which you yourselves once walked then when you lived in them. But now you yourselves are to put off all these anger, wrath, malice, blasphemy, filthy language out of your mouth. Do not lie to one another since you have put off the old man with its deeds. And put on the new man who is renewed in the knowledge according to the image of him who created him, where there is neither Greek nor Jew nor circumcision nor uncircumcision, barbarian, Scythian, slave nor free, but Christ is all and in all. Therefore, as the elect of God, holy and beloved, put on what? Tender mercies, kindness, humility, meekness, loving kindness, bearing with one another and forgiving one another. If anyone has a complaint against another, even as Christ forgave you, 
you so also must do. But above all these things, put on love, which is the bound of perfection, and let the peace of God rule your hearts, to which also you were called in one body, and be what? And be what? Thankful. Now here we go. Here's the other part. Are you ready? Let the word of Christ dwell in you what? Richly. With all wisdom, teaching and admonishing one another in psalms and hymns and spiritual songs, singing with grace in your hearts towards the Lord. And whatever you do in word or deed, do it all in the name of the Lord Jesus, giving thanks to God the Father through him. Hallelujah. And I'm going to close at 1 John 2. Because it's just for me and you. And verse 15. Do not love the world. Do not love gluttony. Do not love covetousness. Do not love greed. Do not love hordism. Do not love the world or the things in the world. If anyone loves the world, the love of the Father is not in him. For all that is in the world, the lust of the flesh, the lust of the eyes, and the pride of life is not of the Father, but is of the world. And the world is what? Passing away. Does everybody get it? The world's, we are in the passing away of the world right now. The world is in a process of passing away. That's what the regeneration is about. The ways of the world are being diminished. It may not seem that way. The problem why it doesn't seem that way is because there's more demonic forces on the surface of the earth now. There's much more demonic forces. The gates have been opened. There's more demonic forces. That's why we got to call destructive fire down on every star gate and every portal and port of Satan's kingdom every day. But yes, yeah, so there's a spiritual warfare that's happening because they're trying to resist the regeneration and the passing away of the world. And whatever you do, don't get vaccinated, please. Dear God, you'll go home before everybody else. <laughs> Hallelujah. Is everybody okay? <laughs> Verse 17. And the world is passing away in the lust of it, but he who does the will of God does what? Abides forever. You know, I bet you most people didn't pray about whether they should receive the vaccination or not. You know, because if they did, God would have probably answered them clearly. If they never heard God's voice, he'd have, they'd have heard, no! <laughs> you might even have heard, dummy! I don't know. Hallelujah. <laughs> Verse 18. Little children, it is the last hour as you have heard that the Antichrist is coming. Yeah, he's giving out vaccinations these days. Even now many Antichrists have come by which we know that it is the last hour. They went out from us, but they were not of us. For if they had been of us, they would have continued with us. But they went out that they may be made manifest that none of them were of us. But you have an anointing from the Holy One, and you know all things if you're hearing, if you're seeking, if you're a lover of His presence. Amen? You know, it has nothing to do with we're better than anyone else. It's got nothing to do with that. In fact, it gives us a place of much more responsibility and accountability. Why? Because we know the mysteries of God and we know the truth. Now we are more accountable than when we used to be when we were out there stupid in the world. Amen? Now we have the knowledge of eternity. Now we're living from the future and not from the past. It causes me and you to be more accountable and responsible to the ways of living the way of the life of Christ, but being available to express Christ to as many as needed. We must be the example. Amen? But if you're living away according to the world, you're not going to be an example. 
if you're not a, if you're a person that's a taker and not a giver, then that's not going to be an example. Amen. This is how our light, His light, will shine through. We are in a time right now that is so critical to be a light to the world because of all the demonic activity and all the things that are going on. I mean, they're just letting everything loose right now. Does everybody understand it? They're trying to get whatever they can, destroy as much as they can. I can't tell you how many contrails I've taken pictures of on my way just driving around these days. They're all over the place. Thank God for the blood. I have to come against it. And those lines that are in the air that are still there, those are called chemtrails. Yes, they were released from jets, but they're not from the jet fuel because jet fuel dissipates. Those are chemtrails. They carry all kinds of bacteria. They carry all kinds of stuff, nanotechnology, all kinds of things. And if you've noticed that your sinuses were really bad this year, it's because of the chemtrails. It's not because of pollen. Not that they're not irritating more pollen. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? But again, we are fighting a battle right now. It's a life and death situation these days. Because they're coming at us in every way possible. The wealth of the wicked is being utilized to destroy the righteous. And many people are taking the bait because many of the righteous have compromised and are still listening to the demonic news, the fake news. And they're the first ones to get the vaccinations and all the other stuff. But they're really not true believers. Because if they were really true believers, they would know the truth. Amen? Amen. Right now, the world is still controlled under fear. That's why people are running into the vaccination. It was created by what? Fear. You know what they're afraid of? Losing their life. When we lost it already. Now they're looking for it. We gave our life up. We do not have a life. So don't look for it. <laughs> it's been buried with Christ. Amen. You now live from the future, not from the past. You are brand new. Breathing the breath of God. Eternally bound. What an awesome thing to know these things. And to live these things. And able to express these things. What mysteries. Think about it. Before you were saved, you didn't know none of this stuff. We didn't know none of this stuff. We were just walking around thinking everybody's the same way. Temporary morons. That's what we were. And they're still out there. We need to turn them over. Give them a spanking so they wake up. Man, we are in a time and season right now that is so critical. I just want to encourage everyone. Don't give up. Keep fighting. No matter what's going on, no matter what happens, no matter what trial and tribulation there are, you can burn through it. And I said burn through it. Why? Because there's something greater on the other side. Getting ready to get released to you. Amen? Come against that spirit of gluttony. Let's fight against that thing. So Lord, as we come to you and we thank you for your message tonight, we rebuke that spirit of gluttony. And if it's any part of any one of us, Lord, we command that spirit of gluttony to loose us and to leave us and go to the pit in the name of Jesus and take every associated spirit with them of covetousness, greed, hordism, and anything else, love of money. Take it all and send it to the pit that we may be free, free to worship on you and express you with no hindrances or limitations in Jesus' name. And everybody said amen. Praise God. Be blessed and stay dressed with the glory. <laughs>